Hey everyone, Matt from Woflow here. Today we're going to go over our New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program Patient Orientation class. We're going to go over what the eligible conditions are in New Jersey, tell you exactly what you need to do to get enrolled in the program, give you some knowledge on the current running alternative treatment centers in New Jersey, explain to you the cannabis types and compounds so you know what medicine to get, and go over proper dosing and consumption methods here in New Jersey. So the first thing we're going to go over are the eligible conditions. Now it actually is easier than you might think to get into the program. There are many eligible conditions that you can see. ALS, anxiety, wasting syndrome, chronic pain, glaucoma, AIDS, IBS, migraines, MS, PTSD, seizures, nausea, and other conditions as well. Now while there are many good qualifying conditions for New Jersey, cannabis does help with some other things. It reduces anxiety. It's going to help with your depression. It treats asthma symptoms, relieves chrome symptoms. It has anti-seizure qualities. It can actually help prevent cancer cells from growing. It will give you relief from migraines. And the biggest one that we talk about now with soldiers is PTSD. So next, how do you actually get enrolled in the program? Well, the first step to be able to become a registered patient is that you need to schedule an appointment with a New Jersey medical marijuana program doctor. To find a doctor, you can log into the Department of Health's website where they will break it down by county and you can find exactly the doctor that you are looking for in your area. Once you have made an appointment with the doctor and you have gone and got your paperwork through, you're going to get a reference number. Now this reference number is going to be used to log in to, to the Department of Health website and create your profile. This is where you will upload a photo and verify your address. You can see in the orange box where you would put your reference number that your doctor will give to you. Now step three, once you have entered your photo and verified your address and your profile has been accepted by the state, you will get an email saying that you need to pay the registration fee and that you will get your card soon after that. The fee is $100. However, if you are a senior citizen, veteran, or under some sort of form of government assistance, you can qualify for a $20 registration fee. Now, after you pay this fee, you will get your patient ID number and your card will come shortly after that. You will be able to log in to the Medical Marijuana Program website to see various information about your profile. You can see in the orange box that if you click any one of these links, this will allow you to log in. There is not an exact login area. Once you log in, you're going to be able to see information on your doctor and your allotment. Now this is important. You want to make sure you do not go over your allotted amount of cannabis you are allowed per month. There is in New Jersey an ability to get a three ounce maximum per month with a year doctor registration right now. So one of the other things you can do on the website is change your registered ATC or alternative treatment center if you want to go to a different one to get a different product. It is important that when choosing your registered ATC you see if they have the products you're looking for to give you your desired effect. So now that you got your card in the mail, you can go to a dispensary and buy your medicine. What is the first step? Well, as I just said, it's important to know which alternative treatment center or dispensary you're going to go to and to make sure they have the medicine you are looking for. 
the first thing you want to do is schedule a first time appointment with the ATC of your choice. Now it's important to do this because it can take some time, sometimes a couple weeks to get a first time appointment so you can actually go in and buy your medicine. It's important to bring two forms of ID including your medical card with you as well as cash because debit cards are not accepted except at one dispensary currently. So now, which ATC are you going to choose? Well, currently, as I said, we have six operational in New Jersey. It's important to note that not every dispensary carries all allowed products in New Jersey. Pure Leaf in Belmar and Breakwater in Cranberry do carry all allowed products in New Jersey. Harmony Dispensary also in addition to flour, carries vapor cartridges. The others just carry flour at this point. So now we're going to talk about the different cannabis types and cannabis compounds. The interesting thing about cannabis is that the different compounds in the plant actually bind to receptors in your body to unlock different effects. Now, while we are studying over a hundred different cannabis compounds with all different effects, you can understand why people say cannabis helps with so many things, because each compound unlocks a different response in the body. A couple of the different types and compounds we're going to talk about are well-known ones such as THC, CBD, flavonoids, and terpenes, which are the flavor profiles of the plant. The first thing we're going to talk about is finding the right strain for you. When you go into the dispensary, most of them classify their strains by three groups, sativa, indica, and hybrid. Now, sativa is famous for that increased energy level. It helps improve focus helps with ADHD. It's going to combat depression and it's mainly recommended for daytime use. Now indica is that anxiety, sleep, stress relief strain. Great for relaxation, pain relief, really suggested for nighttime use because it does promote sleep. Now in the middle you have hybrids. This is the best of both worlds. There are different ratios of indica and sativa hybrids, so it's important to note what strains are being crossed together because you want to make sure they will give you your desired effect. Next, you're going to see different strains are made up of different terpenes. Now, terpenes are actually the essential oils in the cannabis plant. They give that flavor and scent profile, and they have various therapeutic benefits on the body. A few different ones that are important to note, such as pinene, which we all smell in pine, cedar, and fir trees. This is actually a bronchodilator. It helps improve memory and focus. We also have lemonine. This gives that citrusy, sweet smell from lemons and other citrus plants that is associated with elevated mood and help provide stress relief. Another great terpene is beta carophylline. This is a spicy scented terpene found in basil, pepper, oregano. It has various anti-inflammatory effects and it's antibacterial and antimicrobial. Another great one for relaxation is Lionel. This is that lavender scented terpene, great for anti-agitation and antidepressant effects. Some other interesting terpenes to note are one, valsin, which is actually a powerful tick and mosquito repellent. It's found in a lot of citrus fruits as well. Humulene, 
which is a great earthy, woody flavored terpene, gives hops its taste and aroma. And the last one we'll talk about, which is another good one, is Ossony. This is a herbaceous flavored terpene that gives that citrusy, woody aroma, and it's very effective in anti-inflammatory properties. The next compounds we're gonna talk about, a couple you'll know, and maybe some you might not as well. The first, and probably the one that gets the most noteworthy attention right now, is THC. Now this is the mind-altering cannabinoid that's alleviating nausea, reducing pain, helping you sleep, increasing your appetite, and it has neuroprotective qualities as well. The next one that a lot of people are talking about right now is CBD. Now this is a non-psychoactive cannabinoid that is really good in decreasing inflammation. It also helps to reduce anxiety, and it is shown to slow cancer cell growth. It is also great for helping to control seizures in humans and pets as well. The next compound we're gonna talk about that you might see in the New Jersey dispensaries is CBG. Now this is the precursor to THCA, CBDA, CBCA. This is the beginning cannabinoid. It is effective in treating glaucoma. It's shown great promise as a cancer fighter and treatment of gastrointestinal disorders. The next compound that I wanna talk about that is really interesting is flavonoids. Now these are the naturally occurring plant pigments found in the cannabis plant. They have a diverse group of nutrients and they're also found in a lot of fruits and vegetables. Now interesting facts, when people talking, uh, talk about cooking out the nutrients of their food, they're actually speaking about flavonoids, whether they know it or not. There are a wide variety of health benefits for flavonoids anti-inflammatory, anti-thrombogenic, anti-diabetic, anti-cancer, and neuroprotective effects. It really does help improve cardiovascular and metabolic uh, symptoms in your body as well. It's important right now to note that you can buy CBD or hemp over the counter. There's two different types though that we want to distinguish so you know when going into a store and buying over-the-counter hemp, you know what you're buying. The first type is full spectrum hemp oil. This contains CBD, so it's great for reducing inflammation, reducing stress and pain, helping you sleep, and also nausea. The second product you'll come across is hemp seed oil. This does not contain CBD, but it is very healthy and has its own benefits, such as helping with brain function, skin moisturizing, and it carries all nine of the essential amino acids. The next thing we wanna talk about is proper dosing and consumption methods. It's important to note that whether it's your first time or you're getting back into it after a few years, you want to start low and go slow. Cannabis these days is getting stronger and is it important that whether you smoked or medicated 30 years ago with strains back then, they actually contained a much lower percentage of THC than they do in certain strains today. So again, start low and go slow. So in New Jersey, you have various different consumption methods. If you are not a smoker, you can medicate. If you want to be discreet, you can medicate. If you want to have a topical administration, you do have options as well. 
First in New Jersey, for inhalation, we have flour, we have pre-rolls, as you will see on the screen, we have vaporizers and vape cartridges, as you might hear a lot of lately. And the interesting thing to note about those and all of inhalation is that the onset is going to be seconds to 15 minutes, the quickest of them all. The next is oral administration. Now in New Jersey, we do have lozenges. These are great for getting different ratios of THC and CBD so that you can counteract the different effects of the different cannabinoids. It is important to note that a good ratio of THC and CBD will help to deliver increased and better effects on the body. They work together better. The onset for lozenges will be longer though, about a half hour to 120 minutes. The next oral administration is a sublingual or a tincture. These actually will be inserted into your mouth between the gum line and your teeth. You want to hold it there for about 15 seconds to get the fastest relief and then just swallow. Or you can put in water, coffee, or various foods to have a longer onset because it has to be digested. These are great for getting the most potent amounts of THC and CBD directly into your system, especially if you are not a smoker. The next administration we're going to talk about is topical. Now this is great for bombs, salves, ointments. This is going to give a direct benefit to the area that you're looking relief from and can be easily used on various uh, parts of the body with a typical onset of 10 minutes to one hour. Next, we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program. All patients and caregivers need to carry their medical card on them at all times. Your medical cannabis should always be maintained in its original labeled packaging. Patients and caregivers cannot grow their own cannabis in New Jersey right now. Patients can consume cannabis in their own home, in areas that cigarettes are allowed to be smoked, and in your vehicle if you will not be driving after, such as if you live in an apartment building and cannot smoke in your apartment. It is also important to notate that you cannot bring your cannabis or your medicine across state lines. It must stay in New Jersey. Even if you're running real quick into New York City and you live in Fort Lee, it is not allowed. The last and most important thing is to be truthful with police officers if you do come encountered with them. Show them your card, explain to them that you are a patient and you should not have any problems. Lastly, we're going to recap everything we spoke about. We told you the eligible conditions for New Jersey so that you know if you can get enrolled in the program. We showed you exactly what to do with our three-step process to obtain a card in the New Jersey program. We gave you knowledge on the six open alternative treatment centers so that you know which ones to go to to get the products that you are looking for. We explained to you different cannabis types, different compounds, so that when you go into the dispensary the first time, you have the knowledge needed to get the medicine right for you to get the desired effect you're looking for. We also went over proper dosing and consumption methods allowed in New Jersey. Thank you so much for being with us today and we'll see you soon.